I'll admit, when this movie came out, I really didn't know anything about the mass comics published by Dark Horse Books. I only checked them out afterwards, and they're a completely different tone than the movie. From what I've heard, the filmmakers originally envisioned that The Mask would be a much darker film, more in tone with the comics, where whoever dons The Mask becomes an anarchistic maniac called Big Head. But their plans changed after casting comedic actor Jim Carrey, then just starting to become a big star, and changed it into a comedy to showcase his talents. The basic plot is fairly simple. Jim Carrey plays Stanley Ipkiss, a banker who seems to have the worst luck in the world, but remains an optimistic nice guy no matter what. Just in the beginning parts of the film, he gets screwed over by his boss, his landlord, his mechanic, and he makes an ass out of himself in front of his love interest, Tina Carlyle, played by Cameron Diaz in her first role. That is, if you don't count her previous performance as Naked Girl in a short bondage film she did. Yeah, let that one sink into your head a little bit. Okay. Well, Tina is at the bank Stanley works out at because uh, she's actually using a hidden camera in her purse to case the joint for her criminal boyfriend, Dorian Tyrell, who plans to rob a bank and use the money to overthrow his boss, the crime lord, Nico. Stanley tries to go to a club with his friend Charlie and some girls, but his car is still in the shop and he's forced to bring a ridiculous loner car, and then he gets thrown into the street when the bouncers mistakenly think he's trying to force his way into the club. On the way home, the car breaks down and then falls apart for good measure. When Stanley sees what he thinks is a person floating in a river, he jumps in to save the person, only to find out it was just some floating garbage. What he does find, though, is the Mask of Loki, an artifact when, that, when worn at night, can change a person into their deepest, darkest desires. Stanley, a repressed, a repressed hopeless romantic with a love for cartoons, turns into a living cartoon in the form of a crazed wild man. As the Mask, I guess that's what he's called, right? I mean, they never call him Big Head. He beats up some muggers, then he proceeds to get revenge on his mechanic and landlord. Cops show up to question Ipkiss to see if he knows anything about the disturbance at his apartment complex, but he feigns ignorance, thinking that it was just a dream. The second time he becomes the mask, he robs the bank he works at and heads off to the club to impress Tina, who is a dancer there. He winds up dancing with her, but is confronted by Tyrell and his goons. Tyrell wants revenge because the mask robbed the bank that hit before his men could and caused the police to show up, in which his bank robber friend the doctor was fatally wounded. There's a crazy dance scene and a bunch of action. Tyrell shoots off the mask's tie, which reverts back to being a piece of Stanley's pajamas. When the cops find the pajamas there, they realize he's the mask, because no other idiot would wear that kind of pajamas, I guess. But he just claims that his pajamas were stolen. Yeah, real smooth. He turns into the mask again to meet Tina, but is ambushed by cops, which leads to a crazy scene where he escapes by starting a song and dance routine. At this point, I gotta say, this is Jim Carrey at his best. The guy is an absolute maniac and lends a lot of his own personality to the mask character. And he did his own singing and dancing in the film. Stanley is rescued by a reporter named Peggy, but she sells him out to Tyrell for money. Tyrell takes the mask and becomes some sort of creepy demon dude and kills his former boss, Nico, and robs a fundraiser. Stanley, who got arrested after being separated from the mask escapes with the help of his dog and tries to confront Tyrell and save Tina, but it's the dog that saves the day by getting a hold of the mask. Tyrell gets flushed down a cartoon toilet and the mask swallows the bomb that he had set. Stanley is absolved of his crimes as the mask as eyewitnesses put Dorian Tyrell as the mask, and Stanley throws the mask of Loki back into the river where he found it, giving him a much happier ending than in the comics where he wound up dead at the end of it all. The Mask was a pretty damn good movie and very funny, with interesting special effects for all the mask stuff and a lot of wacky slapstick comedy. Jim Carrey was starting to make a name for himself with movies such as Ace Ventura and The Mask. Since then, he sort of flitted between comedy and more serious roles, but for the people who appreciate his comedy, The Mask is a total classic. One thing I should mention, it never really got a sequel. There was a sequel planned, but Jim Carrey would not be a part of it, apparently never wanting to be in a sequel to anything ever. I guess the exception was Ace Ventura. Years later, they made The Son of the Mask, which pretty much had nothing to do with the first film. From what I understand, aside from being like six years too late for anyone to give a damn, it was awful to boot. Though I haven't seen it, so that's not my opinion, really. The Mask, though, is a great film. It's incredibly funny, full of lots of screwball action, and the Mask character really is like a living cartoon. I'll give it an 8 out of a possible 10.